Hello everyone and welcome to a new reading vlog. I have tried to plan out the rest of the books that I want to read for Realmathon and I've decided that this week I'm going to be focusing on my backlist books. Now I believe that two of the books that I plan on reading this week were featured in my Realmathon TBR, however I have found one that wasn't on that TBR but would fit the bonus points for my team for Realmathon which is Team Shadows and that's going to be to read a book with a black cover. So I do think I'm going to be reading Capturing the Devil by Karen Maniscalco, The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden, and I believe it's The Dark Queen by Josephine Boyce. That's the plan anyway. As the vlog goes on, it might change. We are actually in the last week of Realmathon. It is currently Sunday the 24th of March. It is 10 past 10 at night as I'm filming this, which may explain my kind of tired demeanor, tired voice. I have been filming all day. I filmed five videos today, which is insane, but I am off work for two weeks now, for Easter which I'm so thankful for. Yesterday I took it pretty slow with it being my first day off and today I just wanted to get some stuff filmed so that I had some content to go up for you guys. Anyway I'm getting off track and I don't want to be rambling because it's time for me to go to bed but the first book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog is Capturing the Devil. This has been on many TBRs and I've just not prioritised it. It's the fourth and final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series by Karen Maniscalco and I think that my issue is that I loved the first two books but I didn't enjoy the third book as much. I have started this one. I don't know how many pages in I am. Let me just double check. The page number typically isn't on the page that I'm on. I'm on page 37 which is chapter 5 and whilst I do like being with these characters again I am finding it hard to read this. I tried to read this quite a few times today but I haven't really made a dent in it. Like I have a long way to go. This is a pretty long book. It's about 450 pages but I'm trying to go in with an open mind. This is the last book so hopefully a lot of things will get resolved but in case you don't know each book in this series focuses on a historical figure that was somewhat involved in suspicious occurrences. So in the first book we have Stalking Jack the Ripper which of course focuses on, you guessed it, Jack the Ripper. The second book is Hunting Prince Dracula so they're in Romania and it seems as though Dracula has returned. The third book is Escaping from Houdini. Of course Houdini was an escape artist and there's a lot of things going on there. And in this one we have Capturing the Devil which doesn't actually give anything away but I believe that this book focuses on H.H. H. Holmes who if you don't know was responsible for the murder castle or murder hotel as it's also known. If you've watched American Horror Story Hotel it's based off of H.H. H. Holmes and his crimes and yeah he was a notorious serial killer that built this hotel and essentially each room in there was a death trap and he killed people in order to claim their insurance and things like that. It's a massive case if you are interested in learning about it I would tell you to go to the true crime side of YouTube. Kendall Ray has a video, I believe Eleanor Neal has a video as well but yeah it's a case that I am very interested in because I am a true crime consumer and I do like to learn about things like this. So I think I'm also scared to see how it's tackled in this book. But I will say it has opened up with a bang. We have already had a murder occur and the crime scene is pretty similar to that of the crime scenes in the first book. Which again brings me back to H.H. H. Holmes because there is a conspiracy theory that H.H. H. Holmes was Jack the Ripper because there was a period of time where he came over to the UK and that's when the murders occurred and then when he went back to America the murders stopped. So. Yeah, I'm seeing the connections there, which I do appreciate. But it's not only focusing on the serial killers. We do have our two main characters, Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell, and we are exploring their relationship throughout this series as well. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it, so I'll try not to, but I do like seeing them together. I think one of my main issues with the third book was that they were acting differently to how they had been up until that point, and it didn't quite sit right with me. But it seems as though we're back on track. I love them together. They are so funny and they just get on each other's last nerve which is just yeah it's really fun to read from. So yeah that is essentially the plan. I can't tell you too much more than that fortunately because I'm not that far in but I really am hoping that this is one that I'm going to enjoy. I just think I need to get past that 100 page mark. I need to sit down and dedicate some time to it and then hopefully I will be in the book and I will be wanting to read forward and learn more about what is going on with this case. So that is the plan 
on for now. This vlog may end up being shorter than a weekly reading vlog. I'm hoping that's the case at least because of course with me being off I do have some spare time so I'm gonna spread it between reading and going to the house. But yeah hopefully that'll mean that I can fly through this one relatively quickly and the other two books as well and then I do plan on doing one final vlog for Elmathon after this one which will feature another three books. So I'm being ambitious but we'll see. For this one though I'm gonna start with this. Hopefully smash through it tomorrow and the day after. I don't want it to go over two days to be honest with you but we'll see what happens there. For now I am going to go to bed. I am not going to be reading more of this. Tom and I have also started watching the Australian version of The Traitors and I'm hooked so that's definitely not helping my reading at the minute but I feel like it's all about balance you know. I'm off. I still want to enjoy myself and have a good time. I also have to look after this one who is a bit of a menace but I will have to take her for a walk tomorrow so yeah we'll see where the day takes us but those are my plans. We'll see whether I stick to them. For now though I'm gonna go to bed and I'll probably chat to you guys tomorrow morning. Good evening guys. I am once again filming a late update for this vlog. I promise I will film during the day throughout the rest of the week but I just tend to put off filming for some reason so I've made myself sit down now before I get to bed. It is currently Wednesday now so I haven't updated this vlog in quite a few days and honestly that's because I haven't really had any thoughts to share with you. I have made it up to page 204 of Capturing the Devil by Kerry Maniscalco and at the minute guys I'm really sad to say that I just am not really loving this one. I feel like the pacing is just off. We are spending a lot of time in the same place discussing the same things and I'm just a little bit bored of it now. I want to get into the nitty gritty details. I want the murders to be explored a lot more because yes we've seen a few murders but it's not half as much as I would want, which is a very weird and morbid thing to say. But we are dealing a lot with family drama and relationship drama and I just don't really see the point in it to be honest with you and I think I'm just bitter because something happened and it made my heart so happy. I was so happy for the characters. I was really excited for them. I finally thought that everything was resolved and that it was going to be this happy ending and then I got punched in the gut real bad by Carrie Maniscalco. Everything came crashing down, there was a spanner in the works and yeah it just kind of messed everything up, had characters kind of turn on each other a little bit and <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like how that's created so much drama and I'm really hoping that it doesn't affect the relationship between our two main characters. So yeah, I'm feeling a little bit salty about that, not gonna lie, but I do like America as a setting. I feel like it's really interesting. We are seeing Audrey Rose deal with a lot of PTSD, really, from especially the first book in particular. I can't go into details, of course, but the events of that book have stayed with her and with what's happening in America, happening now and with them seemingly being connected to her and the first book in a way you can tell that it really is affecting her and it's just really sad to see and yeah she's just such a strong female main character she does have a chronic condition as well she uses a cane in this book in particular and I just feel like it's so important that that representation is happening and that it's there because it's not often that you see that in books particularly fantasy books and yeah I just feel like she's such a badass female main character character that has been extremely strong throughout this whole series and has faced everything head on and yeah to see her now be plagued by what has occurred and also be put in such a horrible situation with something that has recently happened it's just heartbreaking so I really do hope that we move on from this and we see her deal with it in a way that she can somehow get closure. So yeah bit of mixed feelings on this book I am enjoying it but not loving it and I feel like that is why I've been struggling to read it. Saying that though I am hosting live reading sprints tomorrow so I'm hoping to get through a big chunk of this book. I don't know how long they're gonna be for because I have an extremely busy day tomorrow which is typical so I guess we'll just see what happens on the day but we need to go to the house tomorrow to start pulling down the ceilings in order to insulate it, put up new plaster boards and get the plasterers to plaster it. Then I'll obviously have the live show then I believe I'm going out with my cousin. We're gonna go for a dog walk and after that I need to go to the gym. So yeah, a very jam-packed day. Speaking of the gym you guys, oh my gosh I have to tell you, I went for a run today and I kid you not about two minutes in I was 
was caught in a hailstorm. Now I will pop a video up on screen because it's actually hilarious. I did share this on my Instagram stories because I haven't been in a storm that bad in a while. It is the end of March and we have a hailstorm. That is crazy. It was definitely getting colder these last few days, but to be caught in a hailstorm <laughs> was just not on my list of things to do. And yeah, I was hurt actually. They were really big and yeah, they came down quite powerfully. So yeah, I was definitely <laughs> hurt by them and I was soaked through. So yeah, the start of my run didn't go well. Kiwi and I did persevere though, but I just thought it was hilarious and I thought you would enjoy seeing <laughs> the state of me on that run. But yeah, that was just crazy and I honestly couldn't believe it. The worst part is though, about five minutes after I came in from that run, we had blue skies and it was lovely. <laughs> so yeah, it was just my luck, wasn't it, to time it and go out in a hailstorm, but Kiwi and I had a funny time and yeah, Tom and I laughed about it afterwards. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. My last vlog was really good. I managed to cut down on the rambling in these updates and it made for a shorter vlog, which I feel like is a lot easier to watch. So I'm hoping that's gonna be the case with this one too. I haven't started any other books yet, so my main focus is just finishing Capturing the Devil. I really do wanna prioritize this and get through it now because yeah, I've just been putting it off. So I'm hoping that the sprints tomorrow will force me to pick it up and read it and hopefully I'll actually fall into the story a lot more and hopefully the pacing will pick up a little bit more as well. Guys, I cannot believe it. It's the 28th of March and I've woken up to snow this morning. I did kind of think that it might snow just because of the whole hailstorm I was caught in yesterday but it's still a bit of a surprise and look at the colour of the sky. Oh my goodness. You can see it's started to melt off already but yeah, it's just just really exciting but I honestly can't believe that we have snow and it's almost April like what on earth is going on? Kiwi loves it though we've come up to the attic because she likes to put her head through this window so that she can have a look at everyone down there but yeah this is ridiculous and we are planning on going to the house today and it's in a very remote place with loads of back roads so I don't know if we'll chance it because yeah I don't want to be in any sort of accident do I like you I want to come back to you so yeah we'll see but for now I think we're just going to stand here for a bit and look at the snow because look how beautiful it is and contemplate what on earth is going on here
So I'm currently hosting some live reading sprints on my channel. Thank you to everyone who has joined and has been commenting. It really does mean the world to me and it makes me feel a little bit less lonely on this Thursday afternoon. But I wanted to update you guys because I've so far read just over 100 pages, I want to say, in these sprints. I can't get the next page. My hands are so cold, hence the blanket. I've made it to page 308 and last time I updated you I was on page 204. Four, I believe so yeah good going I am enjoying it a lot more now it's definitely picked up but I'm gonna carry on reading for a little bit I did just want to update you before I read any further because I don't think I'll finish this today but yeah just in case Kiwi is here of course she's munching away on a bone there but yeah I'm gonna sit down now carry on reading this power through a bit more of it and see where I managed to get up to right guys excuse the state of me I am just about to head off for a run with Kiwi but I thought I should update you guys first because I do have a lot to talk about firstly I'm very happy to say that I have now finished capturing the devil by Kari Maniscalco and I will say that the second half of this book really did work for me very soon after my last update I carried on reading this and the kind of drama that was happening did take a back seat which gave more room to the murder mystery element of it which of course is what I wanted. I feel like as a whole this series was very strong. We had connections between each book throughout and this in particular refers back to the events of that first book quite a bit. I did touch on this earlier when I spoke about Audrey Rose dealing with her PTSD and I think that the way that that's handled is done so well throughout this book. Even towards the very end she doesn't kind of get over it but she does manage to come to terms with it and no one ever makes her feel bad for feeling the things that she feels. She does hold on to a lot of guilt which is really sad but as the story goes on as she learns a few more things we do see her start to come to terms with the fact that this wasn't all on her and that she shouldn't carry all this guilt for something that was out of her control essentially. So I did really appreciate that aspect of it. I loved seeing our uh, character characters again. I'm really happy with the way that this series ended, where our characters were, what they were doing, who was there and yeah I just loved how it all came together, how it stayed true to the other books till the end and I'm so happy now that I finally finished off the series. I've been putting off this book for way too long but yeah very glad to have read it. It was a very good conclusion and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I can't give it the full five because that first half was a bit of a struggle for me but when we got into the murders when everything happened and picked up I really did fall into the story and I really did feel every single emotion. After finishing Capturing the Devil I did pick up The Dark Queen by Josephine Boyce. This is a book that I've owned for years. I got this when I first went to Yelk which was in 2018 I believe. I met the author there, I bought the book and she did sign it for me which was lovely. However I have made it 32 pages in and I I don't know how I feel about this guys. I'm not sure if I want to DNF it because I'm just not vibing with the writing style. You're kind of thrown in at the deep end here. You're thrown into the action straight away but it's a very weird writing style where it's very jarring. It doesn't quite flow. One minute you're in one place, the next you're in a different place and yeah I just feel like I am really confused. So I don't know whether to give it the benefit of the doubt because I'm only 30 pages in. Normally with a fantasy book I say I give it around 100 pages before DNFing it because it is a complicated new world and so you do need that time to get immersed in it but yeah just from the get-go I've really struggled to pick this up and read it and oh I just don't know what to do. The synopsis reads can Amaria defeat her enemies without giving into her own darkness? When the Delarian church gains too much power Amaria takes matters into her own hands and enacts a violent justice but the church leaders are not the only ones who have their eyes on controlling her queendom. A dark malevolent force has entered her land that threatens her people and those she loves most. Amaria must uncover ways to counteract the dark magic of a new enemy as she learns to wield her own goddess-given power. See that sounds really good. The only issue I have is that it's a big book. We focus a lot on religion in here which I'm not too big of a fan of in my books and yeah I just I don't know guys. So essentially I've soft DNF'd it for now because I was really struggling to read it. I wanted to get another book read for Realmathon because today is is the last day of the readathon. It is the 31st of March and I knew that there was no chance I was going to read this anyway in one day. So I have picked up my last 
book, which is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. This is the second book in the Winter Night trilogy, the first book being The Bear and the Nightingale. And I read that one last month. I did enjoy it. I didn't love it as much as everyone else seems to, but someone did recently comment on my February wrap-up saying that the pacing increases in this book and that the plot gets more complicated as well. So I did decide to pick this one up and I can tell you guys that I'm 190 pages in already, so I'm about halfway and I must say I'm really enjoying the fact that I picked up this book and that I was able to fly through almost 200 pages in one sitting. Now I can't tell you too much about the second book because it is of course the second book in a series but I do have the first book to hand here which matches my outfit today, I love that. But I am just going to read you the synopsis because I feel like this is such a hard book to describe. So it says, in a village at the edge of the wilderness of northern Russia, winter lasts most of the year and snowdrifts grow taller than houses. Here an elderly servant tells stories of sorcery, folklore and the winter king to children of the family. Tales of old magic frowned upon by the church. But for the young wild Vasya, these are far more than just stories. She alone can see the house spirits that guard her home and sense the growing forces of dark magic in the woods. So that of course doesn't give too much away. I did go into the first book not really knowing too much about the series as a whole and I am really glad that I did. I was pleasantly surprised. I loved the atmosphere in that first book but I just didn't feel like there was enough in it for me to keep me interested. I did read it very quickly but it was definitely missing something and now that I've started book two I can happily say that I do feel a lot better towards this one. I feel like the first book is a lot more isolated because we are mainly set in a small rural village. It's very old-fashioned, we have a lot of old beliefs and then we do have an outsider who comes in and preaches about this new religion. Now I have just said that I don't really like reading about religion in my books and that still stands but I feel like this was done so well because we're looking at old Russian folklore versus the new beliefs of the church. Of course I'm not going to go into too much depth on that first book but the old folkloric element to it really did capture my interest. I loved seeing all of the different creatures that guard the village and the houses in particular and I love seeing our main character Vasya interact with them and stand up for what she believes in against all the odds. Now in book two the scope is definitely a lot larger. We are seeing a lot more of Russia itself and the majority of this book is actually set in Moscow so far but we have seen different villages along the way. We've seen how different people interact with travellers in this story and it's not always the best thing. This is definitely more intricate in the fact that because we're in Moscow with the prince we do get a lot more of a political aspect in this book which you guys know I'm a fan of. Again the church does play somewhat of a part but I don't think it's nearly as much as it was in the first book. There is also a trope in here that I love which is a hidden identity. Again I'm not going to go into details because of spoilers but I've loved reading about our character throughout this book. I love seeing familiar characters that we know and love from the first book as well and seeing how they cope in general in a different setting because some of the characters we haven't seen for years and then other characters we've seen a bit from but not all that much so putting them all together in one place is very interesting and I'm just excited to see how this one plays out. Again I don't know what the overall plot is going to be for this series. I feel like the first book could have been a standalone. I don't obviously know how this is going to end yet so I can't tell you whether I think this could be a standalone but I don't see an overarching plot at the minute especially between the first and second book. They are pretty contained so yeah I'm just excited to see where we go from here and what ultimately happens to our characters. So that is where I'm up to at the minute. Sorry for the long update but as I mentioned I do want to try and finish this one off today because it is the last day of the readathon. I am taking some time off now though to go for a run. The weather is looking a lot better than it was the other day when I got caught in that hailstorm so hopefully that doesn't happen again but as soon as I get back in I know I'm going to pick that book up and power through so I did want to update you guys before getting further along in it and I feel like the next update will be the last one because I will hopefully have finished this one off. It is a few days later now but I'm very happy to say that I did in fact manage to finish The Girl in the Tower at the weekend with actually a pretty decent amount of time to spare. I really did enjoy this one. I like that it was very different to the first book. We do have the same sort of atmosphere throughout which I do appreciate but in terms of the plot and the politics it has moved forward quite a bit and we're seeing a lot more of the world and the characters as well. I really like the villain in this book or the bad guy rather. I thought that their story arc was very compelling and even 
even though I did kind of get hints throughout and I knew that that's where it was going to go, I did not expect the reveal behind it and the information that came with that. I am still going to say that this could be a standalone book. I still can't quite see where the overarching plot is going. We definitely have some connections between the first and second book. Of course, we're following the same characters further along in their journey in this one. But the story wrapped up pretty nicely once again here and I would be happy to leave it there. So I'm not sure where it's going to go in the third book and what we're going to be dealing with there. I am planning on reading that one next month though so hopefully that is the case. I'd love to complete another series off of my TBR and I'd also love to see how this all wraps up and where our characters eventually do end up because I have grown attached to them. I really do like all the different characters in here, even the ones that are a little bit grating at some points. The animal companions in here as well are just amazing. I absolutely love them so that is definitely an element that keeps me coming back to these books. I am going to rate this one four stars. It didn't quite hit the five star mark for me but I did thoroughly enjoy this one. I read it quite quickly. It was definitely faster paced than the first book which again I appreciated and all in all I love seeing our characters struggle against society's expectations and also try and challenge them as much as they could. They are in very difficult circumstances throughout this book and because of Russia's hierarchy there are specific rules that need to be followed and we see our characters push those boundaries as much as they can in order to live the lives that they wanted to. So I really like seeing that. I like seeing people rebel in some subtle ways and again I really did like how magic came to play in this one as well. In terms of The Dark Queen, I don't know whether I'm going to come back to this one. It's a soft DNF for now but I just have had no inclination to pick this up which is such a shame because I love the cover so much. So I'm going to give it a few more weeks and if I don't pick it up I will be getting rid of this one unfortunately. As I mentioned previously the writing in this is very jarring. It doesn't quite flow as I'd expect it to and so far I just don't think I could read a 400 page book that is written that way. And then of course I also finished Capturing the Devil which I'm so happy about. This is another one that I'm giving four stars to. I really did enjoy it. The first half as you saw was a bit of a slog to get through but I flew through the rest of the book and I'm very happy with where all of our characters ended up and yeah sad to say goodbye to them but I'm happy that I've read all of these books now and that I've been with them from start to end and yeah it's really nice to have finished this one because it is one that I've been putting off for way too long. So that is the end of Realmathon for me guys. I am so happy with the amount of books I managed to get read this month. I did read 12 but technically 11 because this one was a DNF. I am going to include it in my wrap up though so I am going to say that I read 12 books for Realmathon. I've had so much fun and I honestly can't believe that I've slept on it for this long. This was my first year participating. I really did enjoy it as I mentioned and I just want to thank Cassidy for creating this readathon because it really has made me feel like part of the community again. Not gonna lie though, I am now feeling a little bit burnt out. I'm not really wanting to pick up anything at the minute. So I am gonna take it slowly in April. I haven't filmed my TBR yet because I just think I wanna mood read and I think think that I'm going to take a break from weekly vlogging at the minute as well just so that I can get back into the swing of reading, get back into the swing of work as well because I'm going back to work in a few days and yeah that's going to be a big change once again. So I apologise in advance that I'm going to be taking a short break from the reading vlogs but hopefully they'll be back soon. I think I just need to take a bit of a break and not worry about updating the vlogs constantly and sharing my thoughts on what I'm reading because there have been points throughout Realmathon where I haven't wanted to be on camera but I've made Made myself do it because of consistency sake and yeah it would just be a problem otherwise if I didn't so I just want to take it easy guys I want to see what books take my fancy and I want to take my time with them and really get immersed in them as well if you have made it up until this point in the video please go ahead and leave me a horse emoji down in the comments that doesn't really represent Realmathon but it does represent the girl in the tower which was definitely a favorite of the month not quite the five stars as I mentioned but I really did enjoy this one. I love the atmosphere, the magic, the politics and just the characters in general but most importantly I love the animal companions and one of them is a horse so I feel like that would represent this one very well. I know I say it all the time but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me. It blows me away that you guys watch these all the way through. So if you are still here but don't have anything in particular that you would like to say please go ahead and leave me that emoji now. On that note I do just want to say a massive thank you to each and every single one of you who have watched these 
Mammothon vlogs, I was definitely nervous about posting vlogs again because I'm the type of person that leaves it quite a while between updating and I feel like that's why I've been put off by weekly reading vlogs. However, I've had so much fun this month. As I mentioned, I've read some really good books. I've read quite a few as well and I've just had so much fun of being immersed in the bookish community again. So yeah, a massive thank you to you guys for your support. It really does mean a lot and it makes me want to create more content for you guys where I can. I'm gonna stop getting soppy now though and I'm gonna wrap up this video. Before you go, please do check to make sure that you have clicked the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. I do have some exciting videos coming your way soon so please do keep an eye out for those. But I am going to leave you guys here for now. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!